Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. This one's going to be about attribution theory. Every non-living object such as book, machine is subjected to the laws of nature just like we living beings are. But they don't have beliefs, motives or intentions. But we do, which is why we try to explain why people behave in certain ways. We make assumptions about internal state of a person and we try to explain their behavior. Attribution theory tries to explain the ways in which we judge people differently which depends on the meaning we give to a given behavior. According to this theory, we attempt to determine whether an individual's behavior is internally or externally caused. That determination basically depends on three factors, distinctiveness, consensus and consistency. Now, behavior is caused internally or externally. Internally caused behavior are those behavior we believe to be under the personal control of the individual. Externally caused behavior is what we imagine the situation forced individual to do. Suppose your friend comes late to a meeting. You might attribute that to his late night partying and then oversleeping of course. This is an internal attribution. You think it was under his personal control. But if you attribute this to something unexpected, which is out of his control, such as the tire puncture or an accident or traffic perhaps, you are making an external attribution. Now about the three determining factors, distinctiveness, consensus and consistency. Distinctiveness refers to whether an individual displays different behavior in different situations. If the behavior seems unusual, it is externally attributed. For example, it is unusual for a regular worker who is never late to the work to be late someday. In such cases, we are likely to make an external attribution. And if a person is late almost every day and is also somebody who blows off commitments, we make an internal attribution. The behavior shows consensus when everyone facing the similar situation respond in the same way. If consensus is high, we probably give it an external attribution. And if it is not, we give it an internal attribution. Well, in school days when the time was too less and the homework too much, and somehow all your friends or classmates manage to get the work done and next day you are the only one standing for not having done the work, teacher probably makes an internal attribution. You know, you can hear her scream about how your friends could manage it and you couldn't and that's because you are irresponsible and whatnot. But if none of your classmates do the work, teacher tends to make an external attribution and excuses all of you, granting you some more time perhaps. The last determining factor is consistency in a person's actions. You observe if the person is most of the time late or if it's just once in a long while that he shows such behavior. If the behavior is consistent, we attribute it to the internal causes and if they are not, we attribute it to the external causes. It is found from attribution research theory that biases distort attribution. While judging behavior of other people, we tend to overestimate internal factor and underestimate external factors. This is a fundamental attribution error. This error is why the sales manager tends to blame his sales agents for their poor performance rather than considering the creative productive line introduced by their competitor. We blame failure on external factors and take credits for the successes. For example, you might blame the less time to study for exams or perhaps the mild fever you got if you score less in the exam. But if you score good, you take all the credit and talk about how you worked hard for the exam. We accept positive feedback while rejecting the negative ones. This tendency for individuals to attribute their own successes to internal factors and put the blame for failures on external factors is called self-serving bias. A US News and World Report study showed its power. Researchers asked one group of people, if someone sues you and you win the case, should he pay your legal costs? 85% responded yes. Another group was asked, if you sue someone and lose the case, should you pay his costs? Only 44 answered yes. Hope this clears about this theory and it's been helpful for you guys. Thank you for the support.